It's that time of the month again, we're going to talk about the four stocks to buy now or put on your watch list. Because yes, for some, these stocks might still be too expensive or you're still waiting for the next quarter, the next two quarters to give you a bit more information about the state of the company. Now, it's true that year to date, the stock market has performed quite well. A lot of tech companies, a lot of big tech companies especially, have gone up significantly. So some of those might be more expensive than others. Small caps more recently have rallied a little bit. Tom Lee, for example, believes this is just the start. So I've mixed it up a little bit. Some companies that have performed well, some others that have not. Yes, it's true, two out of the tech industry, one out of the financials and one in the consumer goods. I'm not going to include stocks. Well, I did include two stocks that are yet to report their earnings, but I could have included way more. But since in the next coming days, we're getting, well, a lot of companies that will show us their quarterly figures, I thought I'd just stick with those companies right now. That's not to say that there aren't plenty of other good picks out there. No, but since we're doing just four in this video, maybe I'll do a second part. Now, for those that missed this Sunday video, this is basically the big picture right now. This is the S&P 500 trailing 12 months PE ratio in the last 10 years. Of course, during the pandemic hype, we were way, way more expensive. Then after the crash, 2022, it was a very, very bad year for the overall stock market. And so the PE, the trailing 12 months PE went under 20. Now it's back closer to 26. Does that mean that, oh, you can't touch anything, everything is expensive? No, as I've explained in the other video, I think this will be the new norm, a PE of 20 or 24 being viewed as not expensive. Of course, you need more context, right? You need to know that this is a very, very profitable company, a company that continues to grow, is very dominant in its industry, etc., etc. Because of course, there are companies that are trading at 30 PE, 20 PE, even 15 PE, and that can be expensive. But right now, overall, no, I don't think that we are overextended. Are certain stocks too expensive? Yes. But then again, there are also some stocks that have yet to move this year. So you have to balance it out because there are two camps right now. One camp saying, I'm not touching anything. Everything is too expensive. On the other hand, you've got the other camp saying, to me, there are still great companies. The market being up or not doesn't really matter. I'm on that side of things. Of course, it's always great to have some cash on the side in case the market does dip even further. So without rambling on too much, if you enjoy these type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if not. Would really appreciate that. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com forward slash Gaussian investor. Thank you very much. And so stock number one is a stock we haven't covered for quite a while now, actually, well, since they last reported, I think. And that's Block, ticker symbol SQ. It's now trading at $60.60. Year to date, as you can see, it's down 21% or 21.5%. Year over year, it's down 22.5%. Now, it has a market cap of $37.4 billion and has a forward PE of 17 times. Now, again, you might say 17 times, that's expensive. In my opinion, for this company that is growing as fast as they are, plus these are the analyst expectations for Block in the coming fiscal years, top and bottom line, you can clearly see, again, bottom line growing faster than the top line. EV2 sales in the next 12 months, 1.4 times, again, I don't think it's that expensive at all. The current average analyst price target sits close to 50% higher than the price we're at today. Like I said, this is one of the companies that are yet to report their quarterly figures. So you can, of course, wait until you get more information. And you'll get that information Thursday. Thursday is going to be very, very busy here on the channel. So make sure you are subscribed because we're going to cover a lot of companies in the coming days. Now, Block, as you can see, is extremely cheap compared to its five-year mean. Forward PE, EV2 EBITDA price to sales, price to free cash flow is the only one that is more expensive right now, but I do expect that to become much better as the company does more restructuring, as it becomes more and more profitable and actually cares about shareholder returns. Right now, price earnings to growth, 0.42, like I said, very, very cheap. And look, last quarter was another good quarter, right? Gross profit over $2 billion, growing 22% year over year. Operating income, 12% margin. Adjusted operating income, it's 17% margin. 
Cash App gross profit growing 25% year over year to reach $1.26 billion. Square gross profit at $820 million growing 19% year over year. Net income with a margin of 23% and adjusted EBITDA 34% margin, adjusted EBITDA reaching here $705 million. More recently, we also had a report coming out saying that Jack Dorsey is about to overhaul Block in a reorganization he warns may feel big and disruptive or uncomfortable, an internal memo said. In a note to employees this week, Dorsey said the company's internal reporting structure is getting an overhaul that will blow up the boundaries between various business lines grouping employees together instead based on roles like engineering, design, and sales. We're going to reorganize our entire company by function and disband our business unit reporting structure, adding that the move would take Block back to how we started as a company. The subject line of the note was FN Block. Dorsey said that the restructuring is intended to address what he's identified as three problems at Block, those being collaboration, craft, and flexibility. Basically, a bit what Zuckerberg has done a long, long time ago. But as always, Block, especially under Jack Dorsey's leadership, are sleeping at the wheel. With the reorganization, we are going to remove the business unit silos and organize all of Block's engineering, design, product, sales, etc. Each of the new segments will have a new leader appointed. A spokesperson for Block did not respond to an email seeking a comment. Again, this is great for shareholders, right? It, it took a while, but at least it is happening. As for the expectations for the coming quarter, EPS non-gap 84 cents, gap basis 36 cents. We've got 24 revisions up and two on the downside. Revenue estimate to come at $6.3 billion. Now, if you look at the EPS for this year and next year, it sits at $3.43 and $4.37, basically for PE for 2025. 13.78. That's quite cheap for a company growing this fast. Of course, there's always some risk that consumer spending pulls back a little bit. It hurts a business like Square. But overall, and despite me not liking Jack Dorsey that much as a CEO of a publicly traded company, I have to admit that right now this is looking very, very well appealing. So that's company number one. Do share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Company number two is one that we just mentioned, and that's Meta. Now, Meta, of course, you know the story of the last five years. It's up 134%, but it was one time where the company, and especially the stock, couldn't catch a break. It went down and down and down, and then, of course, a huge, huge V-shaped recovery. Right now, it's a company with a $1.18 trillion in market cap. Still, despite being up year-to-date 32%, despite being up year-over-year 44%, it only has a forward PE of 22.4 times. And this company will report their quarterly figures on Wednesday. Right now, the average analyst price target sits close to 40% higher than the price we're at today. Forward PE, like we said, 22.4 times in the next 12 months. EV to sale 7.1 times. If you look at what the analysts are expecting for the coming years, yes, fiscal year 2024, still some strong growth top and bottom line. And then afterwards, growth is supposed to slow down a little bit, but stay constant. Sales growth, 12% or so growth year over year. EPS closer to 13, 14%. But the company is also buying back a lot of shares and paying a small dividend. But I do still think that Meta still has a long, long way to go. It's going to be a huge, huge player in AI. And so right now, I can understand if you're putting Meta on your watch list, especially since on Wednesday, they report their quarterly figures and also because if we look at the five-year mean and then we compare the valuation metrics to what is happening today yes it's a bit of the same so you could say maybe waiting for a dip is worth it in my opinion it's still a very very strong company i think the momentum is with the company despite the huge spending on ai they have ways to actually monetize it and it's not like their business model relies on an llm or something like that no on the contrary, it does not, which is also why they're giving it away for free. Llama 3, open source, one of the biggest on the planet right now, one of the best on the planet as well. They don't really care. They actually, it's actually a genius move, let's be honest. When you've got open AI and stuff like that trying to monetize their own models, you got a huge, huge company like Meta that can spend billions and billions of dollars each and every year on that. Suddenly come out and say, look, 
take it for free. We don't care. It becomes very, very difficult to compete against something like that. As for the expectations for the coming quarter, EPS non-GAAP $4.78, GAAP $4.75, revenue to come at $38.29 billion. In the last 19 days, we got 13 revisions on the upside and four on the downside. As for the EPS estimate, $23.19 for December 2025, meaning a forward PE of just over 20, which again is very, very cheap if you ask me. Now I understand Meta might not be your cup of tea. Some of you think this is a sin stock, which again, it's your portfolio. You do not have to buy things that you don't like. Fair enough, right? Moving on to stock number three. This is a company that has already reported their quarterly figures. Last week, actually a good quarter, if you ask me, and yet the stock did drop around 10, 12% or so. We've talked about that on this Sunday video as well. And that's Alphabet uh, Google. It's now at $168.3, market cap just over $2 trillion, and here as well, Ford PE, 20.8 times, despite being up 20.6% year-to-date and 27% year-over-year. Looking at the average analyst price target, still sits 20% higher than the price we're at today, and here as well you can see that the bottom line is expected to grow faster than the top line. Now with Alphabet, unlike Meta, we still are under the five-year mean. For PE, EV to EBITDA, price to sales is a little bit higher, but overall, if you look at price earnings to growth, 1.2 for a dominant company like Alphabet, to me, this is a gift. They are also buying a lot of shares and paying a dividend, 0.47% dividend yield. Now last quarter, if you missed it, this is basically it. Revenues grew 14% year over year, $84.74 billion, operating income $27.42 billion, with an operating margin of 32%, year over year improvements, of course. Then if you look at the operating income, where do that come from? You've got $29.67 billion coming from Google services. Google Cloud still growing quite fast, now at $1.17 billion. Other bets is still losing money. Alphabet level activities, restructuring stuff of that, losing money here as well. So total income from operations, $27.42 billion. If you look at the different segments, YouTube was a small miss, but still growing quite nicely. Everything grew as it should. Cloud still, let's say small compared to AWS and Azure, but growing, I think at around 28% or so year over year, becoming bigger, becoming more profitable. I mean, it's only the start. They have various segments here. No, I don't think that Google search is going anywhere. Actually, since OpenAI ChatGPT came out, Google search actually took some market share. Can you believe that? And these are the current estimates for the upcoming earnings report, which is just in October. Non-GAAP EPS $1.84, GAAP $1.83. Revenue, $86.28 billion. We've got 18 revisions on the upside and 15 on the downside. Of course, that will definitely change in the coming weeks and months. Now, I know, I know, big tech companies, what's the upside there? Well, if you want to have a full answer, go watch the video in the top right corner. It's the one with Tom Lee on the thumbnail on the channel. Full answer is there. Moving on to the last one, stock number four is also a stock I've talked about not so long ago because... The stock went down a lot and rightfully so. And that's in the consumer goods segment. That's Nike. Now, of course, it might not be the high growth stock, the tech stock that we usually talk about on this channel or that people want in their portfolio. But again, Nike is one of those huge, huge famous brands on the planet. If you can get it for cheap, still pays a nice dividend, 2% dividend yield. It's down 31% year to date, down 31% year over year as well, market cap $110.4 billion, forward PE 23.3 times, which of course I know, especially with this year's expected performance, might not look cheap, but the market does expect it to rebound in the coming years. I do expect it to rebound as well. I don't think Nike is going anywhere. Yes, there is a lot of competition in the shoe market, sneaker market as well, but Nike is still Nike, right? Do you think this brand will disappear in the next five to 10 years? I highly doubt it. And so right now, the average analyst price target sits 25.6% higher. Of course, again, 
just to be clear, these things can change each and every week. Well, not by much, but analyst opinion and point of view on a certain stock can change because the stock goes up a bit, stock goes down a lot, suddenly you become bearish and bullish, you have to follow the sentiment, right? So I'm just saying, I'm just showing this for the sake of this video. You do not have to make your investment decision based on a return potential because of analyst expectations. That said, this is what the market is expecting, the analyst consensus here. So not the greatest out there, but you're not buying here a company that has EPS at the top, revenues at the top. No, you're buying here a company that currently is a little bit struggling, but is expected to become better over time. I don't know how long that will take, but they said they are making some changes. And of course, we choose, you know, the moment you come up with an idea, it doesn't take a week or a month until people can buy it. No, it takes a while. Full restructuring takes a while. But again, long-term investors, you want to be buying the bottom or as close as you can to the bottom. Then when the stock goes up, you're good to go. Of course, it can take longer than expected, but at least the risk reward is much better than buying the top. Seems fair, right? Seems logical. Anyways, looking here at the forward PE, EV to EBITDA price to sales price to free cash flow compared to its five year mean, it is all of course much, much lower. But if you look at price earnings to growth, it's at 3.46, that's expensive because again, as we've seen before, companies expected, well, to have an earnings decrease 20% year over year for fiscal year 2025, but then a reacceleration in 26 and 27. 44th quarter revenue came in at $12.6 billion, down 2%. Nike direct revenue 44th quarter were $5.1 billion, down 8%. But gross margin 44th quarter increased 110 basis points to 44.7%. They also said, we are taking our near-term challenges head on while making continued progress in the areas that matter most to Nike's future, serving the athlete through performance innovation, moving at the pace of the consumer and growing the complete marketplace. I'm confident that our teams are lining up our competitive advantages to create greater impact for our business. While we are encouraged by our process, our fourth quarter results highlighted challenges that have led us to update our fiscal 2025 outlook. We are taking actions to reposition Nike to be more competitive and to drive sustainable, profitable long-term growth. Then I expect fiscal 25 reported revenue to be down mid single digits with the first half down high single digits. As for the next quarter, they expect first quarter revenue to be down approximately 10%. Gross margin, they expect for the full year expansion of approximately 10 basis points to 30 basis points on a reported basis. And of course, there is the Paris Olympic Games. They will market it a lot. Of course, every athlete that wins a gold medal, you will see the Nike symbol. Well, if it's a Nike athlete, that can drive, let's say, some sales in the future. That can drive a lot of traffic through their website if somebody wants to buy their t-shirt, their footwear, etc., etc. And now the last thing here, what are the expectations? Annual EPS, May 25, 26, $3.16 and $3.61. So again, 2022 20, forward PE, annual revenue 49 to 51.8 billion dollars for 25 and 26. So forward price to sales 2.2, 2.1. That's not that expensive, but again, forward PE, like I said at the start of this video, you're going to see way more companies trading at those areas despite not growing 30, 20 percent year over year. But as I said in the Sunday video, yes, we did talk about Coca-Cola, which in my opinion is a more durable company, right? The future free cash flows are a bit more secure than a company like Nike, but a company like Nike, like I said, worldwide brand, pretty stable balance sheet wise, cash flow wise as well. So that's not an issue either. So overall, that's about it. Those are the four companies. I can add way more companies, but then again, Lots of other companies are reporting in the coming days. So we're going to talk about those in the coming days. That's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this type of videos, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.